Hi, I'm Jill Motzko, professor at Eastern Nazarene College, just south of Boston. And in this talk, I'm going to discuss the influence of Christianity on 19th century physicists. So first, I'll do a very brief introduction on some models for the relationship between religion and science. And then I'll look at these models on a few case studies for Faraday, Thompson, and Maxwell. So, for the models of the relationship between religion and science, actually, I think many people believe that there's only one acceptable model, and that is conflict. That basically, religion and science are two ways of talking about the exact same thing. So, therefore, one is correct and the other is incorrect. Um, but that is only one point of view. Uh, there's also the model of contrast or independence. That really, science and religion are totally separate and independent of each other. Uh, this leads to a god of the gaps, that basically anything that science can't explain, it must be god, a miracle. A third model that's, that's uh, accepted as well is conversation or dialogue. That god is the primary cause of everything, uh, but he works through secondary causes, and science describes those secondary causes. And therefore, science can help us see a little bit more about who god is, uh, so they are related, but not totally dependent on each other. And then a fourth point of view is confirmation or slash integration. Uh, this has been uh, accepted by some of the most outspoken Christians who are in science. Uh, really that the existence of God can be demonstrated and proven through science, uh, through the design in nature. So the first scientist I want to talk about today is Michael Faraday. Um, but he uh, uh, mostly lived and worked in the early 1800s. Uh, he'll come up in introductory physics classes um, for Faraday's law of induction, for the Farad, um, uh, for Faraday's laws of electrolysis, if you do cover that um, in chemistry. So I, there, are, there are many ways uh, of uh, mentioning uh, Michael Faraday. Uh, he actually grew, grew up in a blue collar family, received only a, uh, the most basic education, but was able to work his way up uh, to be a professor at the Royal Institution in London. And he was a devout Christian throughout his life. Uh, he specifically was part of the Sandemanian denomination. Uh, which was particularly conservative. And so Faraday believed that the Bible was an uh, ultimate authority on faith, and science couldn't prove or disprove it. Uh, but science did reveal God because it was the science of God's creation, so you could see the Creator through it. Through it. Uh, he really loved Romans uh, 120, uh, that really you can see the invisible things of God uh, through the things that are made, through creation itself. And so a couple of ways that uh, his faith really influenced his science. Uh, one is that Faraday uh, believed that there must be an ordinary, orderly sorry, creation because it was designed by an orderly God. And therefore, we should be able to see the order in creation. And, um, and indeed, uh, at his time, there are many people finding the laws of electricity and laws of electromagnet. Uh, logs of magnetism. Uh, Faraday himself discovered these lines of force and uh, really delved into them. Uh, and it's just amazing, uh, really, that nature can be governed by these laws and that we as human beings can understand these laws and even use it to control nature. Uh, another way that Faraday was influenced, his science was influenced by his faith, uh, was that Faraday was really humble. Uh, and this is one of the key aspects of, of Christianity, uh, that we as Christians should be uh, humble. Um, and uh, this came up in his relationships with others. Uh, in one instance, which could have really derailed his entire career, uh, Faraday, by error of judgment, in his own words, he did not give due credit to a fellow scientist in one of his publications. Uh, and soon there were rumors about his dishonesty and maybe plagiarism, uh, but Faraday uh, uh, quickly reconciled and apologized uh, to the other scientists, and uh, he, his first uh, contact was a letter where he wrote to him, and he actually signed it, Your Obedient Humble Servant. And it was really um, through his humility he was able to uh, correct these relationships and really continue to grow uh, and, and strengthen his collaborations. And his humility was without, without a doubt due to his faith in Jesus Christ. The second scientist I would like to talk to talk about today is William Thompson, who later became known as 
Lord Kelvin, uh, so you might see both names, but he is mostly uh, referred to as Kelvin in our intro physics classes. For example, the Kelvin scale, uh, the laws of thermodynamics, uh, he actually coined the term kinetic energy as well, so there are many ways that you could bring him up in class. Uh, he lived in the mid-1800s to late 1800s, and he's a professor at Glasgow University throughout his career. Um, uh, interesting fact is he was actually knighted for assisting in laying the first successful transatlantic cable. Um, but he, he also was a devout Christian throughout his life, and he was an elder in the Church of Scotland. Uh, his view on religion and science was slightly different. He accepted the model of confirmation slash integration, uh, that really natural science or the science of nature proved that there was a creator uh, through all its design. Um, uh, one of his quotes is that if you think strongly enough, you will be forced by science to the belief of God. And so he was very outspoken as a Christian of how science proved Christianity um, and very, uh, he was very willing to debate uh, with atheists and those who are against Christianity. Uh, one of the specific influences of religion on uh, his religion on his science was about the age of the earth uh, that uh, Kelvin used the laws of thermodynamics as, as well as some assumptions uh, that he calculated the age of the earth to be 20 to 40 million years old, uh, which was far too short for Darwinian evolution. And this was soon after Darwin had, had published um, uh, his uh, Origin of Species. Um, and so and so actually Kelvin was a very strong force that he, even, even Darwin himself had to kowtow to. Um, so actually, unfortunately, Kelvin's uh, assumptions Actually, multiple of the assumptions that he made have since been invalidated because we've learned so much more about science. Uh, but uh, we have to admit that he was a very strong voice of uh, opposition to Darwinian evolution for decades through this. So the third scientist I'll talk about today is James Clerk Maxwell. Um, he comes up in, of course, in Maxwell's equations, Maxwell and Boltzmann statistics, but also if you want to talk about when you talk about the wave nature of light, the speed of light, and also the colors of light, uh, because he helped to invent color t photography. He lived in the mid-1800s in London, Cambridge, uh, also Scotland. He also was a devout Christian throughout his life. Uh, he believed, similar to Faraday, uh, that the Bible was the ultimate authority, that science couldn't prove it or disprove it. But science does help to reveal the glory of God. Uh, and this term, the glory of God, shows up often in his in his. Um, uh, discussions and his quotes, um, and he really encouraged Christians to study science because science could help us to see the glory of God uh, all the more, um, so we should study science as much as possible. Uh, so it's, uh, for, his inf for the influence of his faith on science, it's hard to um, uh, pinpoint exactly any science that you could uh, dedicate exactly that. Oh, this is because he was a Christian. Uh, but uh, his overall character, uh, everyone really acknowledged uh, that he was such a strong uh, a Christian, such a noble character. Um, uh, one quote, uh, he's a most perfect example of a Christian gentleman. And this really influenced all of his relationships with others. Uh, one quote that I really appreciate is, as a professor, he was wonderfully admired. And uh, I really think that that's the kind of compliment uh, that is worth uh, acknowledging, especially at, at this conference. Right. So, uh, in conclusion, we really discussed these uh, uh, multiple models for the relationship between religion and science and I talked about a few case studies that really cover especially the conversation and the confirmation uh, points of view. Um, and so, without a doubt, the faith of these scientists really influenced their physics, um, the 19th century physics as a whole, and these are excellent ways for you to uh, discuss the viewpoints of uh, the relationship between religion and science uh, in any introductory physics class.